So in the last video, we talked about electromagnetic boundary conditions. Uh, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the boundary conditions on the H field, uh, or the boundary conditions on the magnetic field. And why, why again are we talking about boundary conditions? Well, if we have some electromagnetic wave, or maybe we have some DC electric field or some DC magnetic field, uh, and in, in free space, we know exactly how these behave. They, uh, if they're coming from a point source, they just radiate out like a sphere, uh, like a spherical wave. Uh, if they come from a more complicated distribution, then we might be able to calculate it. But we want to know what happens when we've got now an object in the way made out of some material. So maybe this is a dielectric, uh, maybe this is a metal. Uh, maybe it's a crappy dielectric or crappy metal and we'd like to know how the electromagnetic field uh, coming from a some source uh, will behave when this object is in the way and so in the last video we did something kind of cute so we said okay well I'm only interested in what's happening right at the surface of this object and so the surface is just gonna look like a perfectly flat surface and the electromagnetic field, or in the last video we said the electric field, is just going to be constant if we choose a, a part of that surface that's small enough. And we're, we're in general interested in uh, how it behaves at every point on the surface. So taking a single point uh, from a surface is an infinitely small uh, portion of that surface. So this is generally a valid assumption. And in the last video when we talked about the electric field, uh, we broke up the field into some, uh, let's, let's call this a normal component and a tangential component. And in general, the field can always be broken up into these two components at the surface. Uh, the tangential component might just be pointing off in, in some other direction. And then we used, uh, we used Faraday's law with the, we constructed this cute little loop an imaginary loop around the surface and then we figured out what the electric field relationship had to be between this side of the surface and this side of the surface right on the edge of the of the boundary and so we're going to do the same exact thing this time with the magnetic field or the h field but in in this case we're going to use ampere's law so we're going to say that h uh, dot dl this has to be equal to uh, in this case, it's the electric flux density, so the uh, electric displacement field dotted with ds. This, so this is integrated over some area. Uh, and we're going to construct the same exact loop that we had in the last video. So we're going to be integrating over this closed contour, uh, this closed contour C, or just this loop. Um, but we've also got this current term, uh, so the current that's penetrating through, uh, through this loop. And we're only going to consider the tangential component of the magnetic field now. So it's some constant value, uh, we don't know what it is, uh, across this side of the surface and some other constant value uh, across the other side of the surface. And I'm going to call this value h1 and this value h2. Uh, and now we're going to play the same exact trick that we played before. So this loop has some length to it, L. Uh, it's also got some thickness, T. Uh, I'm going to let this loop shrink. So I'm going to take T to go smaller and smaller and smaller until it's right at the edge, until it has zero area. And when I do this, this term is going to disappear. So there is no area over which to integrate. The loop becomes infinitely small. So the loop becomes, say, right next to the boundary. Uh, it becomes so small that the area approaches zero. So I can ignore this, this component. And similarly, uh, since these sides are of zero thickness, I only have to worry about integrating over this side of the loop and this side of the loop. And so if I do that, uh, I'm just gonna get h1, because we said the field was constant over this length, uh, times L minus h2 times L has to be equal to the, pen the current that's penetrating uh, through this loop. So maybe we have some current flowing right along the interface. So I'm going to draw this uh, with, I'm going to draw this in blue. Um, and that's, that's possible, right? It seems, it might seem a little weird, uh, but it's certainly possible to have current flowing along a single atomic layer. That's, that's superconductors do that all the time. Um, 
But the problem now is that we've still got this artificial length. Uh, so let's let's just divide out by the length. Uh, and we are left with h1 minus h2 has to be equal to our penetrating current uh, divided by the length of this loop. And so this here is the penetrating current. Uh, but this is kind of awkward because this current is spread out over a length. So it's spread out over this entire distance L. Uh, if we were to look at this from the, the top down, so if we were to look at this surface from the top down, we'd see a bunch of current flowing like this. So flowing uh, in this direction. Actually, sorry, based on the, the sign convention for these things, uh, for Ampere's law, it should actually be flowing in the opposite direction. Um, so the current should be actually flowing away from us if we're looking at this cross section. So I'm gonna replace all these dots with X's, even though I, I know I can't really see that right now. But the, the surface current is flowing in this direction along the surface. And so it's sort of artificial to talk about the entire current I, uh, because this current is distributed over the entire surface. So what really matters is the current per unit length that's flowing over this, this surface. So if I cut this current at a particular point and I calculated the total current, uh, that current would have, that current is spread out over some length and the linear current density, uh, which we'll write with K, uh, this is what is physically meaningful because the current is distributed over some surface. So rather than this I pen over L, I'm just gonna replace this with the surface current density K. And so usually, but not always, uh, the surface current density is equal to zero. And in this case, H1 is just equal to H2. Or since, uh, let me just rewrite this, uh, this is the tangential component of the H field. And so this is our boundary condition uh, when our surface current density is equal to zero, which is in general the most interesting boundary condition. Uh, so previously we had that the electric field, uh, the tangential component of the electric field uh, was equal to each other. And now we have the same exact thing for the magnetic field. So it's sort of, there's sort of a, a duality between these two and that, that comes from the duality of Maxwell's equations. And there's a lot you can do with these two equations. So uh, for electromagnetic waves at normal incidence, for example, you can get uh, just from these two uh, boundary conditions, uh, you can get Fresnel the Fresnel equations, which we'll go over in, in future videos, but those tell you how uh, incident, how light reflects off surfaces, uh, just from these two super simple equations, which is absolutely wild. Uh, we can calculate, so say this has a certain permittivity, uh, this is the permittivity of free space, we can calculate the reflection that we would expect of light, just given these two boundary conditions which in my mind is, is just, that's, that's just a little crazy. And so now we figured out how the tangential components of our electric and magnetic field behave. Uh, but what about the normal components, the ones that we've been, we've been ignoring up to this point? So there's gonna be some H normal uh, in general of some, some field right next to the interface. Uh, and that's, that's what we're gonna spend the next couple of videos analyzing. You might notice that we've used two out of four uh, of Maxwell's equations in coming up with these boundary conditions. And so we're gonna use the other two out of four uh, in the coming next videos. And I encourage you to think about uh, how to sort of construct the equivalent of a loop um, for the other Maxwell's equations. It's just now, instead of integrating over a closed contour, we're integrating over a surface. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those down below and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.